What's good everybody? So today I wanted to show you the super easy technique that I used to turn this photo into this photo. This is a super easy way to add some light rays into your photos in Photoshop by basically just keying out the highlights, turning them into rays, and then overlaying them back over the original photo. This is gonna work best on images that have a lot of contrast in the highlights. So if we look at this photo, it's a good choice for this technique because we have those bright highlights at the top of the image where the sky is, but it's also broken up by the darker leaves, branches, and trees that are obscuring that light. So the first thing to do is just select your layer and then use a tool called color range. And this is what we're gonna use to isolate the highlights and key them out. Basically what I'm gonna do is set this to select the highlights and then adjust the fuzziness and the range to isolate that part of the image and isolate the light source that you wanna turn into rays. So what I'm gonna do here is just adjust this range so that it selects the entirety of that sky up at the top. And then I'm gonna turn the fuzziness all the way down, which is good for this kind of effect because the further down that fuzziness is, the more defined sharp edges those beams are gonna have. As you can see looking at this image, there are parts of the railing that are also very bright. So those are being selected along with the sky, but that's fine. We can just cut those out, erase them from the selection after we key out these highlights. So I'm just gonna go ahead and select that part of the image. As you can see, we've selected all the highlights and then I'm just gonna hit Command J, which is gonna lift that onto a separate layer. So if I turn off the other two layers and then add a black layer down here, we can just get the water bucket tool and fill that in. We can see what our selection is. It's these highlights right here. And then I can just take the eraser tool and get rid of that bottom part of the railing that we don't want. So there we go, we've got the highlights selected and nothing else and we can go ahead and turn these into some nice fake ass light rays. So I'm gonna go ahead, turn that background layer back on and then just delete that black layer cause we won't be needing it. And then I'm gonna add a filter from the blur section here called radial blur. You don't get a real time preview with this effect which is a bit inconvenient and I'm not sure why Photoshop is set up like that, but we do have some settings that we can use to pretty easily guess how this effect is gonna turn out and then just apply it, monitor and adjust to get it how we want it. So to get this effect to look like light rays, we're gonna first switch the blur method from spin to zoom and then adjust the amount here to control how long those rays are gonna be. And I think it's generally best to just turn it all the way up and have them as long as they possibly can be. Then if we come down to this little box on the bottom right, we have a kind of preview of where the effect is gonna be and what it's gonna look like, what direction those rays are gonna be coming from. So if we just click here, we can drag this point and decide where we want that center to be and basically just position this over where the light source is. So in my case, this is the sun, which is somewhere in the top part of this image. I'm just gonna put it right in the middle so it looks symmetrical. If you think the effect is too strong, you can come down to the layers panel and just lower the opacity a bit. Or if you find the edges to be a bit too harsh, you can just add a Gaussian blur filter onto it and soften those edges out a little bit by doing that. But that is the entire process for creating this effect. And I think this is something that should be used more or less sparingly just because it is adding something completely fake into your image. But that being said, I hope that you've learned something new from watching this video. And if you did, do feel free to share your support by leaving a like on the video, sharing it with your friends, or even subscribing to my channel. I upload two new filmmaking tutorials every single week. But that's all for now. Keep creating, and I'll see you in the next one.